second day, I think. Second day, yes. Uh, so we're heading down, shoot, what is this trail? <laughs> yeah, already... It is, it's the Fork Mountain Trail, that's what it is. We're heading down the Fork Mountain Trail. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and get moving. We got to take an intentional late start just to kind of let the cold of the morning go away. Um, Seem like this stretch of trail is also pretty rocky, similar to uh, last portion of what we were taking yesterday. I believe it was still Jones Mountain, but uh, yeah, a lot of uh, looks like old blowdown, but blowdown nonetheless, and rock. So this may be uh, slower going than ideal, but we'll see. I don't know what the temperature is exactly, but it does still feel a little bit chilly, so getting uh, muscles moving and warmed up is going to be essential to not having a bad day early on. As we get lower, we're also entering what's considered, or what's called, the sag, which is the saddle formed between Cat Knob and Fork Mountain, which was where we uh, camped last night, the base of Fork Mountain, basically. Uh, there's a fire road that leads to the summit of Fork Mountain. From what I understand, it doesn't offer views per se, and it is populated by communications equipment. Uh, in fact, uh, this morning, as we were slowly waking up, a series of trucks did come and go. Looked like they might have been removing some kind of debris or uh, old uh, construction. A couple of dump trucks seemed to be filled with that. So not entirely sure what was going on up there this morning, but uh, I don't know, it was interesting to wake up to the smell of diesel exhaust. Given the time of year, there are leaves everywhere obscuring loose rocks. So that makes every, uh, every footstep a bit of an adventure. Not entirely sure what you're gonna come down on. Um, so that does slow things down a little bit. I don't know if the microphone's picking it up, if that's wind or water. We will be nearing water soon. Let me see if I can get over here without taking a bath. There's those logs. I don't know how trustworthy they are, but I might give it a shot. Oh, actually there's some rocks right here. Let's do that. Yeah, this will work. Stick here, log here. That's good. I'm just gonna jump over this tree. There we go. I just came over those rocks and that log. It's actually like a foot and a half-ish deep right here, so you could maybe come across here. That wasn't too bad. The rocks at the... Yeah. Absolutely. So now we've got to figure out the least dumb way to get across the laurel prong. Um, <laughs> you can't see from here, but it is a good two feet deep in the center. I don't know how much of the cam, how much the of the depth the camera really shows, but that's not shallow. That's going to be up to your shin, knee at, at a minimum. 
and it's cold because, you know, it's October. Well, all things considered, I think uh, wisdom prevailed and we are just going to go shoeless through the stream here. Matt's leading the way and Eric will follow after and then I'll pick up the rear. Those two got across. Now I gotta take my shoes off. This will be in interesting. See if I can hold a camera in one hand, a trekking pole in the other, or if I'm just gonna take a bath. We'll find out. All right, so nice and bracing water on the old feet. Not too bad though. Give my feet a minute to go numb and I'll be fine. Rocks are a little bit uh, wiggly. That's a little unpleasant. Uh, all things considered, not too terribly bad. Ah. What's that? So you may look real easy, and I don't appreciate that. <laughs> we have reached the, it looks like the outskirts of Rapid and Camp. Um, uh, it was built in 1929 uh, when uh, Herbert Hoover was president. He, uh, unlike most prior presidents to that point who had East Coast history, he was born in Iowa, spent a lot of his earlier years in California. And so when it came time to try to, uh, you know, find some solitude, which he did, he developed an appreciation for remote accommodations during his years as a mining engineer, uh, he commissioned his secretary to find some land within 100 miles of DC, um, at least 2,500 feet in elevation to make sure there weren't any mosquitoes. Um, and uh, that was this place. And some of the other people uh, who were also involved with uh, Shenandoah, uh, Harry Bird and uh, a man named William Carson, uh, helped convince him that uh, this area at the headwaters of the Rapid and River where the Laurel Prong and the Mill Prong come together would be an ideal location. And all three of those uh, bodies of water are good sources of trout fishing, which was another uh, item on a Hoover's list of criteria. So um, he had it uh, built in the 29 thereafter, uh, used it, he and his wife used it uh, during his administration. At the end of his term, he only served one term, uh, he, he originally bought the land with his own money. Virginia had offered to gift it to him. Um, but he actually paid out of his own pocket for it. Um, and at the end of his administration, he returned it to the federal government, hoping that future administrations would be able to use the area as a, a bit of a, a recreational getaway spot. Out of all the buildings that were here, I think only the Brown House and maybe one or two more uh, exist. There were others throughout history that had you know, kind of fallen apart and been uh, torn down and cleaned out, but... Um, Toward the end of the, the 50s, I believe, uh, instead of being called Rapid and Camp, it uh, got renamed uh, Camp Hoover for potentially obvious reasons. We are actually in the Prime Minister's cabin, uh, part of the Rapid and Camp. Uh, I didn't know that uh, they had exhibits set up in here, but you can kind of walk through, get a look at. So behind me is the Brown House. That was the name of the President's cabin. He stayed, he and his wife stayed when they were down uh, at Rapidan. It seems like it's boarded up from this side, or not boarded up, but inaccessible from this side, but there's a porch on the other side, so we'll walk around and see what that's like. We've come a little bit north from Rapidan Camp, or Camp Hoover, and even though we've started uh, uphill, one of the nice things about this, at least, is off to our right, mound is the mill prong and there are several sequences of short cascades little waterfalls right up ahead of us here is big rock falls uh, it is maybe 12 ish feet 
give or take, in uh, drop height. So not the, maybe not the most impressive of the falls in Shenandoah, but uh, still not a bad little specimen. And I'm gonna try not to fall in the mill prong, which may be easier said than done. Oh, or I could take the footbridge that I somehow missed that Matt and uh, Eric did not miss. So that puts it on our left now. We're still heading north. Uh, still heading up as well. I do think that our incline is going to uh, increase if it hasn't already, but uh, also not entirely sure where we'll end up today. I think a lot of it just depends on how we're feeling and what our options look like. We've just come off the Mill Prong Horse Trail, and now we're on the Rapidan Fire Road. And if we took this for six-ish miles, we'd end up right back at the camp. We're not gonna do that. But we'll be on this for a little bit. Then we'll ultimately end up on Stony Mountain Trail, but I don't know if there are any other connectors between here and there. All right, so we just got done with a late lunch, and now we are leaving the fire road for the Stony Mountain Trail. So we'll be on that for a few miles at least. We're on the Dark Hollow Trail now. And ultimately that leads to Dark Hollow Falls. Uh, which is the most visited falls in Shenandoah. Mostly because it's right off of Skyline Drive. We made it to Dark Hollow Falls, at least the uh, lower portion of it. Uh, there is a trail that goes up back uh, behind some of this that we're not going to take tonight. The light's on its way out and we still got some distance to cover. But even just this little spot here, uh, it's pretty nice. It's got some good uh, flow. Uh, I forget exactly the height of Dark Hollow Falls. I'll put a note uh, in there. You know, if I turn around, you can see it's, well, maybe not. It's behind me as well. I don't know if it's showing up over my shoulder back there. But uh, yeah, it's just, like I said earlier, it's these little bits of opportunity to see features like this, you know, make some of the <laughs> the less than ideal or the less than fun uphills a little bit worth it, at least. We are now taking the Rose River Loop Trail, just, uh, just past uh, the Dark Hollows Falls, or Dark, Dark Hollow Falls. So somewhere along this probably is where we'll end up uh, making camp for the night, but still got some light left and a little bit of downhill, so that's what we're gonna try to take advantage of. We uh, finally found a place to uh, camp for the night, so that's what we're gonna do. And that's about it. You won't see me until the morning. Anyway, see you then. <laughs> 